wouldn't know which story to tell you. Which story do you mean? The one about the bee. No, the one about the look in the eye. No. The one about the look in the eye. How about I tell you about my grandparents? Your grandparents? Since when do you have grandparents? You're the son of God. Yes, but also I live here on Earth. So I have to have grandparents just like all of you. What were they like? Where did they come from? My grandmother was named Anna of Aaron. And my grandfather, Joachim, was a direct descendant of King David. Of a king? Wow! They were very wise and just, and they lived in Nazareth. But they were sad. Why? Because they were getting very old, and they hadn't yet had children. And they dearly wanted some. Did you dream anything last night, Anna? Did our Lord speak to you in your heart? Only that next year, I will be coming to the holy city for two feasts instead of one. I have dreamed of having a child for so long, Joachim. Do hope, Anna. God will reward us for our faithful love. What does that mean? It means they were dreaming of a child, but they didn't yet realize that their daughter would be the mother of God, my mother. I was praying, and in the darkness I saw a spark of light, which sang with a heavenly voice, May what you have wished for come to you. But what should we call this child, Anna? We will call her Mary, Star of the Sea, the name of the first great woman in Israel. So, through this miracle, Two great saints gave me my mother. But what happened then? A huge rainbow appeared and stretched across the sky. There also appeared a star shining like a huge diamond. My grandmother looked up to the sky and said, She is the star. Her sign is in heaven. Mary, arch of peace.
because they had lived such good lives, the light of God found them and lifted their souls to happiness, and they flew like butterflies to heaven. <laughs> what did Mary do? Well, here is where Mary met Joseph. Men of the tribe of David, of the race of David, gathered here at my request. Please listen. The Lord has spoken, and from his glory a ray has descended, a holy girl is to learn the name of her husband. And that name is Joseph, son of Jacob, of the line of David, a carpenter from Nazareth in Galilee. Joseph, come forward. Come, Mary. This is the spouse the Lord has destined. May he give you his blessing and peace. Mary and I travelled back to our parents' old house. The garden was neglected and the fields were untilled. The original fruit trees were there. There used to be a little grotto, down there at the bottom. Is it still there? Yes, but someone else owns it now. I will build you a new one. Where's he coming from? Is he coming to see the fulfillment of the story, is he? Well, this is the big part, the Annunciation. The Lord is with you. No, do not fear, Mary. I am Gabriel, the angel of God. Do not be afraid. You have found grace with God. You will conceive and bear a son, whom you will call Jesus. His will be the throne of David, and his kingdom will have no end. I have dedicated my life and my purity to God. How can this come about? Since I do not know man. Nothing is impossible to God, Mary. Your elder cousin, Elizabeth, is also with child through the blessing of God. Her child will prepare the way for your son. The world, heaven, and the eternal Father await your word. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let what you have said be done to me. I know what happens next. Can I stay? Can I stay? Mary finds out that she is having a baby and soon Joseph comes to Bethlehem. I do a census. What's a census? A census is when you find out how many people live in the town. So, when Mary and Joseph get to Bethlehem, they can't find a place to stay, so they stay in a stable. And that's the year born Jesus, is that right? And then the shepherds come, and then the three kings, and then the... And then my mother, my father, and myself had to leave Bethlehem because it was no longer safe. But that is quite another story. Well, maybe it's time for another story, a little closer to your time. Let's move forward over 1,000 years. We're now in England, Walsingham to be exact. Observe the foundation of this chapel, built the year 1061, the time of Edward the Confessor, King of this region. Behold and see this devout place where in your troubles you can call to Our Lady and help she will give to all who will ask. Now listen on to discover how, by a miracle, this chapel was founded. A noble woman of the 
this very town, by name of Esheldis de Havesh, desired to honor Our Lady and dedicate to her a glorious work. Dearest of mothers, help me by your guidance to be a good mother to my boy. Help me also to find a way to honor you here on earth. Pray, tell me how to do this. The Blessed Virgin Mary, our Lady Most Gracious, granted her petition. In spirit, she led the widow Rochelle to Nazareth, to the place where Gabriel himself had said, Rejoice, the Lord is with you. You will conceive and bear a son, and he will be called the Son of God. To Rochelle, our Lady said, Of this place, my home, Not once, not twice, but three times was this glorious vision shown, and the shell is marked length and breadth of this house. Mother, most holy, I thank you. I will do as you ask, and Walsingham will have its own Nazareth. All who bring their troubles and prayers to me will find help and peace. Having thanked Our Lady with all her grace, Rochelle hastened to forge the chapel here in Walsingham. The carpenters began to set the foundations of this heavenly house. But they soon discovered that no matter how hard they worked, neither mark nor measure would aid the construction. They were saddened and laid down their things, unsure of what to do. However, Rochelders was not worried and believed Our Lady, her guide, would manage the work after her intention. So she spent the night with devout faith that Our Lady would perform this miracle. It is said that angels rebuilt the chapel while all night the Sheldis did pray, not 200 yards from the original site where it was placed. When the workers returned the next day, it was done. Better than ever they could have conceived, the Sheldis gave thanks to the grace of Our Lady. Therefore, every pilgrim, give your attendance. Our Lady will serve you with humble affection, remembering the joy of her Annunciation and honoring the newly erected Nazareth here in Walsingham. Christian pilgrimages were made to the Holy Land, an enormous journey covering 3,000 miles to reach the city of Jerusalem. Many, many Christians undertook this challenge. However, however, when Jerusalem was overtaken by the Turks, this turned the pilgrim into a warrior and the pilgrimage into a military campaign. Thus began the Crusades. As time passed, the Sheldis began to prepare Geoffrey to look after Walsingham's Nazareth. My darling boy, I am not long for this world. Take care of our home and the chapel. Don't forget what it means to us and our faith. I will honor your request, mother. Even though I travel to Jerusalem and fight for our faith. Geoffrey continued to look after the holy house, even after his mother had died. 
that when he went to fight in the Crusades, he left instructions for the building of a priory. This priory passed into the care of Augustinian canons, and it became one of the most popular pilgrimage destinations in all of England. The main route started in London and passed here through Newmarket, Swatham, Brandon, Castle Acre Priory, and East Barsham. In the 1300s, a friary was built in Walsingham to take care of pilgrims who travelled here. And then, and then royalty descended on Walsingham. 1231, King Henry III. Twelve eighty nine and twelve ninety six, King Edward the First. Thirteen sixty one, King Edward the First. Catherine of Aragon. And finally, King Henry VIII. truth and sanctity of a place are not in its image or its stonework, but in the belief of its followers. Walsingham and its holy houses did not pass away with the destruction of its building in 1538, but rather endured in the hearts of pilgrims all over the world. God does not live in a house made of hands, but in the hearts of all of us who are ready to accept that true belief is within us. Just as true love is in our hearts and the joy of new life, be always ready to do what God asks of us in the silence of our soul. Remember that help from Our Lady begins with a prayer. The ask is to receive. This story began with two people. My grandparents, St. Anna and St. Joachim. And although I didn't know them on this earth, we have been reunited in heaven. Please take care of your families. They are
are the foundation stones of your lives, the bedrock that can never be torn down. Please remember the grandparents' pilgrimage here today as we celebrate the lives of my grandparents, St. Anna and St. Joan. We honor and thank them, and we thank all of our grandparents for all they have done down through the ages. Please take these memories home with you today, and always remember Walsingham and the home of the Holy Family. when we don't know let this be our prayer as we go
Would you like to sit down for a moment, please? Well, I have to say, it takes a lot for me to be speechless. And I'm not, but I nearly was. That truly was remarkable. It really was absolutely remarkable. There's been strange goings-ons in Walsingham for weeks. People disappearing behind doors and all sorts of things and what's going on, I don't know. People being ferried here and there. And, and this is the result. And it's lovely because it's just such a combination of so many people uh, who've worked so very, very hard. And on behalf of us all here, um, you know, that's the first time I've seen that. Um, and it's just, it really is absolutely fantastic. So on behalf of us all here, uh, thank you for showing us the story of Walsingham. Thank you. Yeah. Well, like Monsignor John, it's not often that I'm speechless, completely speechless. Wasn't it wonderful? So who's the presentation? Uh, Liz Dark. Yeah, Liz, Liz Dark.